Okay, in the last video I was ending on oxygen sensors and I kind of want to go through real quick on how you can use a handheld meter like this to troubleshoot your oxygen sensors and kind of check some of the basic functionality. Um, one of the things that I'm going to have to do is kind of show you I can't just give you values because, you know, there's various types of oxygen sensors and they have various values, but you can still use one of these scanners and determine what type of sensors you have just kind of by looking at these values and you can kind of see if it's in a correct range. So basically, let me go through oxygen sensors real quick and just kind of give you a, just a basic functionality and the different types and then how you can use that information to figure out what type you have. And then from that point, you'll be able to look at the readings and kind of see, you know, when you make it rich that, oh yeah, it is, it is functioning properly. And you can do all this from your driver's seat. No need to hook up, you know, propane or remove a vacuum hose for this, you know, simple test, which I'll demonstrate. As mentioned in the last video, for each catalytic converter you have in your car, you're going to have an oxygen sensor in front of it and behind it, um, the upstream and the downstream. Now these two oxygen sensors are going to be sending data to your engine computer on how rich or lean the air fuel ratio is for your um, exhaust coming out. And your engine computer, sometimes called the PCM, the ECM, or the ECU, is going to be using this information, and it's also getting other information. Um, it's getting the you know the intake air temperature from the you know IAT as we mentioned earlier. It's getting the airflow from the mass airflow sensor if you have one or a map sensor maybe um, it's also getting information from like a barometer which we haven't gone over yet but um it's going to collect all this information and basically it's going to use this information to tell the fuel system hey how much fuel do we need to add to to keep this perfect you know optimum air fuel ratio mixture so basically these oxygen sensors are just reporting back to the computer saying hey here's how much um oxygen is in the exhaust. And then the computer is going to know how to adjust accordingly to kind of hit that optimum ratio, which is called the stoichiometric value. And the reason the computer wants to hit this is this is kind of that ratio where it's going to be able to burn up all the fuel and not have any like leftover fuels, you know, coming out of your exhaust. The reason I'm mentioning this is because some of these will show up on some of the handheld meters. You may see stoichiometric values. You may see it listed as lambda. And lambda is kind of the same as stoichiometric, um, but, you know, the optimum uh, air fuel mixture is one. And then you'll see as it gets lean, that lambda value goes up. And as it gets rich, the lambda value goes down. Kind of opposite of the stoichiometric, as you can see in this chart. When it gets lean, the stoichiometric value goes up because you have more air per unit of fuel and vice versa you know it goes down you have less air per unit of fuel so this is going to help us determine um, how our oxygen sensor is functioning because we know what these values mean and also we'll be able to look at some of these values like the voltage and the milliamps and we'll be able to determine what type of oxygen sensor we have which is a great segue into types of oxygen sensors so there's Four main types of oxygen sensors. Um, the first one, which is the most popular, is a zirconia, and uh, these can be heated or unheated. Um, these are the typical ones, you know, the, the most standard ones that you see that produce a voltage between 0.1 volts and about 0.9 volts. Um, they're non-linear. I kind of think of them like kind of as Goldilocks. I mean, it's, it's too hot, too cold, too hot, too cold, just right. You know, I mean, they're, they're usually um, they're, they're they're on or off. You know, like a light switch. Um, and then they have that small center where, where it could be that, you know, perfect stoichiometric value. Um, the second type is uh, Titania, and these are limited use. You probably won't see these um, out there, but I want to mention it just in case you do. Um, the third is Wideband, and the fourth is an AFR, an air fuel ratio sensor. Now, they're both um, air fuel ratio sensors. They're kind of a wideband sensor too. A lot of times you'll see these wideband or the air fuel ratio, they might be upstream, you know, between your engine and your catalytic converter. And then it will use a zirconia downstream. Um, the benefits of a wideband is they read the wider range. Um, these are usually uh, measure air fuel ratios from, you know, I, 
around you know like 10 to 1 to 20 20 to 1 compared to like the, you know that zirconia which you know might be like you know maybe 14.5 to 1 to 15 to 1 so i mean they're a lot wider in the range they can read so your engines can kind of fine tune things they're also linear so instead of just being off and on i mean they can say hey no you're you know this much too rich or this much too lean instead of just saying hey you're rich you're lean you're rich you're lean kind of like the zirconia does um now this is kind of where it gets sticky in these wideband and air fuel ratio sensors you usually don't see people it seems like just say hey this is what your reading should be and that's because different manufacturers can do different things with these so you know we may have one you know air fuel ratio sensor you know like in toyota where it might say hey when it's you know the milliamps go down um that's when you're in a rich condition or when the you know you might have another vendor that says um when the milliamps go down you're in a lean condition so so different manufacturers can do, do different things and then they may have different voltages you know that are kind of at that level point you know i think toyota is like 3.3 volts and for that air fuel ratio sensor to where that's kind of like you know right at the middle and you might have another vendor that's gonna set it at like 2.6 or something so anyways that's kind of one of those things to keep in mind but now we're going to jump into actually looking at the, the scanner and kind of how you can kind of go through and once you look at these readings and you know that these there are different types of sensors out there you can kind of say hey this reading looks like it's a you know a wideband sensor or this reading looks like it's a narrowband sensor so this will this will help out and then we'll also do a quick test where we can see hey we can watch it get lean we can watch it get rich you know that sort of a scenario okay here's a quick drawing and i'm going to give a quick explanation on what we're going to do um, we're going to be testing in this first part of the video the narrowband oxygen sensor and as you've seen in other probably videos or other mechanics do they'll to to create a rich condition they'll like spray some sort of fuel in the intake and um and it'll create a rich condition and then you can see the oxygen sensor you know go in the narrow band go up in value or they'll you know pull a vacuum hose and they'll create a lean condition and then you'll see the oxygen sensor reflect that so we're going to do basically the same thing but um since this vehicle has vacuum assisted brakes i'm going to pump the brakes a few times and we should see it go from that middle range we should go see it go to a lean condition so this is a narrow band oxygen sensor i expect it to go down to about you know 0.1 volts and then it'll come back up and go to overcorrect and it should go into the rich condition you know maybe around 0.9 and then come back down to that middle portion so that's what we're hoping for to kind of just check the functionality of this um narrow band bank 2 sensor and here it goes okay right off the bat just looking at my screen i can see this is bank 1 sensor 2 so it's a downstream sensor and just looking at it 0.625 it's sitting around I can kind of assume this might be a narrow band sensor which it is so what i'm going to do is pump the brakes and that's gonna you know give it a, a lean condition and we should hopefully see this drop down so i'm going to pump the brakes a few times real fast because these are vacuum assisted brakes see if that works yep and you can see it did drop it down so that oxygen sensor i would say is working because it's showing a leaner condition now and then it should come back up I stop pumping the brakes and it goes to a little bit richer when it first comes up so I mean there we saw it go from kind of a lean to a richer condition so the downstreams okay of course this one didn't do the upstream like I was hoping it would on this meter but let's go to see what else they got on here real quick um, there's a missing downstream there was this EQ rat bank one sensor one that kind of looks like a lambda value so I'm gonna see if um it's kind of bouncing around between you know right about one right about on lambda so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pump the brakes again on this and see if this goes down oh I'm sorry lambda values are gonna go up because it's opposite so you can see that it did go increase and then it drops back down to a lean condition and then hopefully it'll come back up into about that one range so this would be my bank one sensor one eq rat i have to look that up 
I'm not sure what that stands for. I think it's lambda, but. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, same car, different meter. This is my, um, this is just another scan tool I have. I like this one a little bit better. It, it's a little bit more descriptive and shows more information for that sensor one. So, um, as you can see on this screen, it's showing that, um, which was like that equivalence ratio we saw in the last meter, but it's basically lamp called Lambda 11 on here. And you can kind of see it bouncing around, uh, but close to that one Lambda, which we want. And it also has, um, O2 sensor one, as showing the voltage and this is a Toyota so it's going to be around that 3.3 volts. This meter also shows the milliamps which we can use to read too so we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to pump the brakes right now and you know we should see that go into a lean condition and then it should go slightly into a rich condition afterwards. So give it some good pumps on the brakes and then we see that voltage go up. The lambda did. Now the lambda goes down and the voltage goes down as it gets rich, and then it kind of evens back out. So offhand, I would say that this sensor is good. You know, just, well, I know it is. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's responding normally. And then let me go back to, let me see. Okay, I gotta go down here. So, um, let me see, get back to, oh, here's another one, Lambda 11. So I got Lambda 11 in here twice. Oh, here's the milliamps. So again, same thing. We're sitting around zero, which is what we want. And then I'll pump the brakes. And we see it go up. And hopefully we'll see it go negative. Yep. And then we'll see it come back. So again, different meters are, you know, slightly different. You could get different things in there. Um, so that, that, that's the upstream. And now let me go back to the um, the downstream. Well, tell you what, I'm just going to pump the brakes. We're going to watch it go down then back up. I mean, it's already kind of coming down, but we'll see it drastically. So there's some good brake pumps. Yep, we see it drop all the way down to almost zero volts, you know, 0.097. And now we're going to see it come back up, back up to that rich condition. Then it might take a little bit for this to come back down. But, so you don't need a graph, graphene, you know, scanner. You can do this all with, without it. So I just kind of want to mention that. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. And, um, sorry it took so long on oxygen sensors. I just thought it was kind of important to kind of go into them a little bit more de in depth and you can kind of see from some of these voltage readings what type of sensor you might have, you know, like, oh, you see that 3.3 .3 volts. I could say, oh, well, that's probably a wideband meter, you know, because we know that those narrow band don't go above one volt. Um, so anyways, it, it, it's kind of useful to understand that and then kind of put it to use and, and see how it reacts. So I hope I described it well enough and kind of showed it well enough, but um, hit me up in the comments if I didn't, and I, you know, you have ways I can improve these. Um, I'm always looking for that. So anyways, uh, thanks again.